they started put, putting the piling for the, for the new bridge, and then they started pouring the deck. But they maximize the use of beam in this project such that uh, they show this to the public, and then the public can understand that, okay, while we are building a bridge then they do have a traffic plan in place, and the government did approve this traffic plan, and everyone needs to follow this rule. So that's just one of the way, one of the things that three that 4D simulation could be used on a on a on a bridge project. Another big project that just got completed in San Francisco about a year ago was this uh, dual drive tunnel project. So this this is the Golden Gate Bridge, and uh, right here is where. The, they, this used to be an existing highway that connects the Golden Gate Bridge to San Francisco. Let's go, go over here, it's the San Francisco project, the San Francisco city. And this, the highway that exists here, the old highway is really old, it's like 100 years old. And they, then the government, they pushed for building a new tunnel that is up quite safe and that will take people faster from downtown San Francisco to the Golden Gate Bridge. This is a one billion dollar project and it took a little quicker than the Bay Bridge to be it's a five years project. So the what I find very interesting for this project was they used the beam model to do a, an actual simulation. So the guy right here, so the, the model was built by that company that I used to work for, it's the PV, and then they load this model onto a game engine. With that game engine, then they put this to the public, anybody can go to the company, and then they can have a real-time experience of driving through their new projects. So now what you're seeing is the guy <coughs> is driving through an actual bridge that was going to be built. And it also has the sound loaded to this system also. While the guy is driving, he can actually hear what is, like the wind or the condition, the actual weather condition of that level. And all of a sudden you see that the public, they have a good understanding of what they're going to be driving on once this project is completed. Right? And it's a very, very good tool for every project stakeholders, for the government agency, for the design company, for the subcontractors to then talk about where are the major change or what are the good aspects of the design, was there anything that needs to be redone. I'm sure that you are familiar with AutoCAD, right? AutoCAD has been in the market for more than 30 years now. If I do my math correctly, it's around 37 years at the very least. If you've used a floppy disk, that was the first uh, few releases of AutoCAD. Over the years, we have produced software beyond AutoCAD. If you watch movies, if you drive a car or ride a motorbike, Chances are, the customers who created those are our customers. So they, are, they either use media and entertainment solutions or engineering solutions. So I'm not going to dwell too much on this slide, but this is just a snapshot of how many people have started adopting BIM for infrastructure projects. And what owners, what professional want, what professional uh, professionals in the building industry want is that they want a much more efficient, much more cost-effective way of doing things or doing delivering projects. These are just some simple rhetorical questions. I'm sure that you would appreciate seeing this apart from just having this as documentation.
for those of you who just use your iPhones or your Android devices for or iPads for Clash of Clans, there's a better way of using mobile devices. I guess the key takeaway for this event, after we finish the whole afternoon, are the key benefits that we will show you. And hopefully the examples we show you will resonate and you remember those. We will not focus on specific products. If you have questions, feel free to approach Synetics after the meeting. But after this string of presentations, we're going to have a discussion. So, so, what's exciting about BIM for infrastructure is not really the software. What's exciting about it is the information that you produce. How many are civil engineers in the room? None? Okay, how many are engineers? Doesn't matter if you're a structural engineer. How many are planners? Are you sure you're in the right room? <laughs> okay, how many are decision makers? Decision maker. It's a trick question. Everyone is a decision maker. Because every day you make decisions. Whether you're going to use your motorbike, whether you're going to use the bus, whether you're going to do your designs differently, whether you're going to create drones. Okay, I'm gonna look for the New World Hotel. It's right there. And we're going to bring that in as a building. So essentially, that's how you would probably populate your map, right? And I just discovered that just beneath the Bentang Market, there's actually some tunnels. I cannot read the text, but I'm pretty sure you can understand what these tunnels are. Okay, so I want to show you something that might look a bit more familiar. So it's the same area, but the difference with this model is it's actually a bigger model of the buildings there. Does this look familiar? Okay, so I can only imagine that not nobody in this room can do this as fast as I just did it. And the good thing about this is it's an easy to use, easy to learn platform. So I'm going to show you basically how to create a planning model that has information. And then we're going to come back to this model right here. I've also integrated or, or included some of, the, some of the upcoming projects. Like this is the uh, Opera House, right? And that's the Caravel Hotel. So the nice thing about this is you can also look underground if I turn off the surface uh, trans if I turn on the surface transparency you'll see that that's the metro line right there this is not the actual metro line by the way so for those of you who are working on the metro line I've just placed a different model but Again, this is clarity. You understand what the project is going to look like. 
Maybe this is not the only option we have. If I switch to proposal number two, that's another more simpler, more economical proposal, right? It de at the end of the day, it depends on the government's budget. How much money do you allocate? But that in itself is already a decision. And you can make that decision faster by being able to understand what we're looking at. Okay, so I'm gonna close this model and I'm gonna show you how to create an intelligent planning model by using this example right here. So I'm gonna here. choose what type of road. And we can go ahead and sketch those roads like that. And you can see that immediately there is intelligence, design speed, the length, and the total length of that road. So we just added in one road. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do another one. But let's let's make this interesting. I'm going to draw a road that goes and crosses this river. Intelligence is about being able to make decisions and at least the technology that you're using should be able to guide you. And what it's doing right now is it's actually guiding us in the sense that if we would need to design an intersection that has parameters such as the size of the vehicle that you can use, so in this case, this is a, an intersection to accommodate small cars. If we choose a bigger design vehicle, we need to use a bigger intersection. If we need to use a wider road, all we have to do is pretty much just go to the library and drag and drop. Remember we created a road that crosses the river, right? still making sense? It's like you're playing a game, but you're actually working. That sounds good, right? So, but kidding aside, the models that we, that we just created are intelligent <coughs> models because if we click on certain aspects of the model, it will allow us to access the information. If we need to access the information about the bridge, you can even choose the kind of section that you're going to use. Okay? Again, this is, this is clarity. This is how we understand what the project will look like because it's easier to understand. Even if you're talking to a a non-technical person, even if he doesn't understand plans, if you show him something that looks like this, it's easier to make decisions, right? It's pretty important when you're talking to financial institutions like the World Bank, the ADB, or, or, or organizations that you're, you're talking to non-engineers, and this is the best way to give them information. So, what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go back to that uh, model for Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam. And we're gonna show something with regards to understanding the impact 
of existing or, or existing or proposed projects. Okay, so I've shown you how easy it is to actually draw or sketch roads. What if we can analyze the traffic for this model? Okay, so this is the intersection that we're designing to be able to understand if there are, there are going, how the traffic is going to behave, we can use the simulation capabilities of InfraWorks. The numbers that you see here indicate that the traffic is going to be 174 meters long. This is red because it's an arterial road trying to merge with the main road. This is blue because as you can see, everything is free flowing. So that's how you start to create intelligent models that you are able to use for different types of analyses. I also heard that you're, you're also trying to, or the government is trying to create a new seaport in, uh, how do I pronounce this, Hon, Hon Kwai, correct? Hon Kwai, right? So by being able to capture information, this is what Hon Kwai looks like. And if you're planning for a seaport, this is how you would probably use it to understand the existing conditions. There's a lot more other capabilities that you can access when you're using BIM for infrastructure. Like in this case, if we would want to analyze the terrain, it's important to know which areas would be flood prone, correct? Are there any floods in Vietnam or in Ho Chi Minh? Uh, no. Do you get floods here in the city? No. Okay, if you want to do your planning a lot more interactively and a lot more efficiently, you can identify low-lying areas, like in this case, this is the river, so if you're building anything here, chances are it's going to get flooded. But again, it's easier to understand because you're looking at an intelligent model. I'm going to go back to the presentation here, and I'm also going to show you other examples on how you can achieve clarity. As I mentioned earlier, you are able to analyze the traffic a lot more efficiently because you can visualize. So this is a, a, a real project in the UK where they did traffic analysis. Going back to what Rick has presented earlier, this is the lighting analysis for the San Francisco project because they need to make sure that the motorists are able to see what's underneath or when, once they're inside the tunnel, right? So lighting analysis is another type of analysis that you can use for safety, very important, so that there are no accidents. <coughs> 